today we are diving into something super practical and easy to understand the adapter design pattern trust me this is going to make you feel like a wizard bridging gaps between mismatch system but first let me paint the picture for you imagine this you just bought a shiny new phone that uses a usb c port but wait your charger is usb a they don't fit so what do you do you grab an adapter it's a simple tool that lets the usb a plug works perfectly with your usb c port without needing to buy a new charger or a new phone convenient right that's exactly what the adapter pattern does in programming it acts as a bridge between two incompatible systems so they can work together seamlessly we'll take an everyday example a payment system suppose you are building a payment system for your app it expects a specific interface that should have a pay method but then you are asked to integrate an older bank service class that uses a different method called make payment like this so as you see there is a mismatch like the process payment method expects the payment interface or the payment service to have the pay method but the bank service has the make payment method so there is a mismatch and if we try to run this code this simply is a bank service and we pass the bank service to the process payment method so if we try to run this code they should throw an error bank service objects had has no attribute pay as you see this fails because bank service doesn't have a pay method now you might be tempted to directly modify the bank service class to fit the new interface right but what if that class is a part of a third party library or legacy code base which you should not change or you cannot change modifying it is a bit risky and what if other system rely on its existing interface so here's where the adapter pattern comes to the rescue instead of changing the bank service we create a new class the adapter that translates the old interface to match what the client code expects right so let's first define the interface that the client code expects so we can define the interface and we can call it payment service and we define the pay method as which accept amount and this needs to be implemented in the child classes now let's define the adapter we simply name it bank service adapter that implements the payment service interface so let's define the init method and we can also have another method called pay that is a part of the payment service interface which accept the amount as an input and simply call the bank service make payment method and that's it so what we have done here is we have created a wrapper around the bank service class which simply call the make payment of the bank service class inside the pay method so it's more of a wrapper because we want the bank service to work with our main code client code right so how do we change the client code so let's remove this so here we can simply do bank service adapter is equals to bank service adapter and that takes bank service as an input so we simply give it bank service and now we should simply be able to call the process payment and give it the bank service adapter as an input and let's give it amount of 100 dollars let's try to run this code and boom processing payment of 100 dollars through bank service so see how smooth that was we wrapped the bank service inside the bank service adapter and the client code didn't even realize the difference we were simply able to call the process payment method onto that bank service adapter and our legacy class was able to seamlessly work with our client code so no changes to the original class the bank service 
so no risk so let's try to break down the pros and cons of the adapter pattern the first one is the reusability we can reuse the existing classes as we just saw in the example even if their interface doesn't match second is the flexibility we can integrate third-party libraries or legacy code seamlessly and the third one is a non-invasive so no need to modify the existing code so no more risk of breaking our code base now talking about the cons very intuitive is the added complexity it introduces an extra layer in our code second one is the overhead so it can make simple scenarios unnecessary complex or complicated now where can we use the adapter pattern in real life here are a few examples the first one is integrating apis so when you need to integrate third-party apis with your application but their interfaces doesn't match the natural way of thinking should be creating a wrapper or adapter the second is working with the legacy code so as we saw adapting to older system to work with the modern frameworks needs bridge so that is a adapter and the third and the very common use case is the ui components if you're a front-end developer you might have seen like adapting to third-party ui libraries to fit in your apps interface usually require creating a wrapper around those library uh, classes or functions so that's the adapter design pattern for you so always think about the usb adapter analogy the adapter design pattern is everywhere that's the adapter design pattern for you it's like a translator between two systems that don't speak the same language use it wisely and you will save time effort and avoid unnecessary headache so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video